What I'd like to do is ask Ms. Williams and Mr. Dalzell and Mr. Pika to come forward, um, uh, just to, to be available for questions by the commissioners. And um, let, me, let me just kind of first start out by saying thank you for being here and, and uh, really taking the time to address the commission today uh, on this uh, important matter. And um, if I could maybe just start out with a couple questions for PG&E. So um, I, I applaud the ambitious um, proposal to really look at uh, moving us into the energy future for California. And uh, my, my first question relates to, um, obviously, we have the example of San Onofre. And um, just your sense of uh, whether you perceive that natural gas is going to kind of rear its head at any point during this transition as a bridge uh, to get to where you, we want to be with respect to renewables. Thank you for that question, Madam Chair. Absolutely not. We believe very firmly that we have the ability to replace the required output from Diablo Canyon with 100% GHG free resources. You know, we find ourselves in Northern California in a really fortunate spot. We, we have an abundant and diverse amount of non-GHG resources. Not every state, not every region can claim that, but we have wind, we have solar, we have biomass, we have geothermal, and we have here at PG&E the largest privately owned uh, hydro system in the country, which includes 1,200 megawatts of pump storage at Helms. When you take all of that, plus the work we're doing on really building a demand response program, a really robust demand response program, higher levels of energy efficiency, and storage, right? We're also looking at storage, uh, battery storage, and other types of storage that are going to continue to be an important part of our state's energy landscape. You put all that together, and as I stand before you, I'm confident in our ability to be able to replace the required power from Diablo with non-GHE emitting resources. It's our North Star. It's what we believe in and why we commit it to a higher RPS level. Okay. Very well. And then uh, we've been getting a lot of correspondence with respect to um, what will happen over the next nine years with respect to, um, I'm not sure it's increased seismic risk, but certainly there is uh, um, always seismic risk uh, given the proximity to multiple faults, uh, as well as um, uh, ongoing uh, damage to marine life. And I uh, wanted to just hear your comments about those two particular issues. Well, let me, let me address the seismic risk first. Um, let me just say um, unequivocally, we believe that Diablo Canyon is seismically safe. It's probably the most studied facility from a seismic point of view in the country. Some people would even argue maybe in the world. And all the analysis, all the data that's been, co that's been collected, all of the work, a lot of it after Fukushima, directed to us by the NRC, all of it points to Diablo Canyon being safe, being seismically safe, and being able to handle the seismic conditions in and around the plant. This is an issue that will never end. We'll continue to learn, we'll continue to review, we'll continue to, to, to apply best lessons learned. But we've had an independent safety council, an independent peer review, look at all the results, and they have also, again, confirmed what we've always also found, that the plant is safe, continues to be safe, and of course with the, uh, the license ex uh, extension not being called for, um, having the plant end at 2024, 2025, a big part of the seismic risk will end at that point. But mm -hmm. we feel really good about where we stand, that the way the plant was designed and the way it was built to withstand the seismic issues around it. Okay, and what about, <clears throat> excuse me, what about uh, sea level rise? On the, sea, on the sea level, you know, the State Water Board has been obviously very focused on once through cooling and they've put together a, a uh, requirements for all of the, the facilities in California, including Diablo Canyon. We are compliant with the state requirements uh, for once through cooling. And of course, the ultimate um, requirement in terms of being uh, consistent with our objectives is the actual decision not to relicense. So we feel that we are in compliance and uh, not relicensing will end once through cooling altogether at Diablo Canyon in 2025. Great, okay. Uh, I appreciate also the attention to the community of San Luis Obispo. Obviously, um, there will be impacts. Um, are there provisions uh, on top of the property tax commitment uh, that will be under discussion going forward? Absolutely. Um, we look at the, the, the tax sort of uh, protection, if you will, over the next nine years as, as a beginning. We think it's the right thing. It gives the San Luis Obispo community an opportunity to plan for, again, a future without Diablo. 
Um, we also have made a commitment to continue our emergency planning, our emergency preparedness activities with San Luis Obispo. We're also going to continue our, our charitable co uh, contributions, our corporate citizenship in and around. But I also want to say that by having the employees have certainty, having them be still living and working in San Luis Obispo, it continues to drive the economic engine of that community. And let's not forget the decommissioning work. The decommissioning work will be a massive construction project and it'll last anywhere between 10 and 20 years. That also will provide some certainty to the community in terms of, of, of knowing that it has a, a strong partner in PG&E. One last thing that I'd like to mention is uh, the decommissioning process. It'll take two to three years to come up with a comprehensive decommissioning plan. As part of that plan, one of the things that we'll have to do is figure out what to do with this amazing site, this beautiful, majestic site. And we will be inviting San Luis Obispo and other community stakeholders for their thoughts to ultimately come up with the best path forward for, for this amazing property. Mm -hmm. and, and on that point, um, any thoughts right now about what will happen to the fuel rods that are currently stored on site? Well, uh, the fuel rods, once that they're spent and that they've been used by the nuclear reactor, they're um, stored in a cooling pool for a period of time, normally around seven years. That allows the temperature to, to be reduced, and then they're transferred to a dry storage, dry cast storage facility that's on site. Our dry cast storage facility on site is uh, ample enough, has sufficient capacity to be able to take on all of the spent fuel rods that have been used so far and that will be used between now and the end of 25. They'll be safely stored on site until the federal government ultimately uh, delivers on its promise to have a long-term repository for spent fuel for all nuclear reactors across the country. Great, thank you. And then uh, one last question if I may. Um, we appreciate the tremendous amount of public input just in our commission proceeding today. Um, what happens next with the agreement with respect to uh, really articulating timelines, but more importantly, uh, continued opportunities for public input? Yes, thank you for that. Um, so once we have the very important uh, extension of the leases, which we hope we'll get today, the next step is really in the regulatory front, and our, our plan is to file with the CPUC by the end of July. Of course, the CPUC has a very thorough and robust public um, uh, input process. We'll have public workshops and our, our hope will be that we'll get input and perspective from many different parties and that hopefully they'll support the proposal. Our expectation, we anticipate that the CPUC would make a decision on our proposal by the end of 2017 and shortly thereafter in 2018 we would issue our request for offer for energy efficiencies which is 2,000 gigawatt hours. Our plan is to start the energy efficiency work while we still have Diablo Canyon operating to kind of get a bit of a running start if you will and reduce energy consumption and then shortly after that we would um, do a second request for offer for an all-resource, non-GHG energy procurement offering that, again, is very important that we get started on that. It takes between five and seven years from uh, the request for offer through um, CPUC approval to design, build, construction for all of this to get steel in the ground to actually have renewable resources available to us. So time matters. And uh, so we are on a, on a forced march here. Today we're with you, next step CPUC, and then after that, the, the important RFOs to replace the power from Diablo Canyon. Okay. Uh, I thought I had understood that um, there was going to be um, a 30-day, um, I guess, public engagement uh, for public input in between the time of our action and the CPUC yes, process? Yes, forgive me for that, okay. absolutely. Okay. Um, in between now and the end of July, which is when we're actually going to file with the CPUC, there'll be a time for public input. We will have workshops and we will gather input from interested stakeholders and we will do that before we file with the CPUC. Thank you for that. Okay, all right. And then probably the $64 million question, and this is uh, obviously with some uh, thoughts about what happened in San Onofre. Um, to the best of your knowledge, do you think the new replacement energy sources will be at higher cost to ratepayers? You know, that's a, that's a really great question. We don't think so, and, I, and I'll tell you why. Um, there's multiple reasons why we don't think so. First of all, the total power output of Diablo Canyon is not needed in the future. We're seeing, you know, Californians take advantage of energy efficiency. We're seeing more and more adoption of private solar rooftop units. We're seeing more communities choosing uh, community choice aggregation as a way of receiving their power. And what all this means is that 
customers, our, our customers, are consuming less energy. So first of all, we don't have to replace all of it. Our estimates are that we'll only need to replace between 40 and 50 percent of the power output from, from Diablo Canyon. And the second, we are very focused on renewables. And the great news about renewables and storage is that the price curves, right, the cost of renewables is steadily decreasing year over year over year. So between, again, continued focus on energy efficiency and helping our customers use less, renewables and storage prices that are going down, we take a step back, we believe that impact to our customers' bills as far as replacement power for Diablo, that it will not be an increase in cost. And as a matter of fact, our best estimate is it will be less costly than, than relicensing Diablo past, into 20, in, past 2030. Okay.